I myself started as a fan fiction writer. I wrote fanfic for about 10 years before I ever tried to write anything commercial. So I feel it's safe to say that I learned everything that I needed to learn from fanfic. I'm Naomi Novik, the author of A Deadly Education, and today I'm going to talk to you about five ways fanfic can make you a better writer. So one of the first things that is the most important, I would say, about fanfic is freedom. I think it's really great to start out as a writer in a place where you have total freedom to decide what you want to say, what you are interested in, what characters you care about, what stories you care about. If I'm not interested in what I'm writing, if I'm not really excited about it, then nobody else is gonna be excited about it either. The other aspect of freedom is that Nobody, um, there, there's no constraints in fandom. You can do anything because you don't have to please any editor at all. I often get this question. My first book, uh, The Temeraire Books, um, were about dragons in the Napoleonic Wars. And people often asked me, especially at the beginning, you know, where, where did you get the idea of mashing up dragons and the Napoleonic Wars? Those feel like it's so strange, it's so separate. The thing is that coming from fandom, the question almost didn't make sense to me because you, of course you mash up anything that you're interested in. And one of the things about fandom is that you, fandom in its own way affirms your right to care about things, even if it's only you and two other people who care about that really obscure anime um, from 1997. And you're still, you can still be a fandom. Some of the ideas from A Deadly Education really kind of grew out of some fanfic that I was writing that was in a way a mashup of Transformers and uh, those who walk away, the ones who walk away from Omelas by Ursula Le Guin, which is one of my favorite short stories. And again, I think very few people would put Omelas and Megatron in the same, um, in the same mental space but fandom gives you the power to do that because it's it's about what you want to put together and it's about what you're interested in and then in turn that lets you create surprising new ideas that then translate into your original work as well so the next thing that i got out of fan fiction and that fan fiction taught me as a writer was to enjoy writing to completely stop thinking of it as an assignment. You will constantly hear, well, why aren't you writing your own original work? Why aren't you writing professionally? And, you know, nobody really asks anyone when they are jamming on a guitar with their friends, you know, why aren't you a professional musician? That's because we recognize that music playing around, that's just something you do for fun. It doesn't have to be something that you do as a, a commercial, professional work thing. And one of the reasons that matters is because, you know, you don't actually have to become a commercial writer. You don't have to become a professional writer. You don't have to become an original writer. If you enjoy writing fanfic, you can just enjoy writing fanfic. The third thing that I got out of fandom uh, and writing fanfic is writing in community. It's this wonderful balance where you have total freedom, but you also share the worlds that you're writing in and you share the community that you're writing in with other people who care a lot about the same things that you care about. If you care about Harry Potter, uh, the Harry Potter universe, enough to write a Harry Potter fanfic story, you know, that's something where you're really passionate about the characters, you want to know more about what's happened to them. There are other people out there who also almost certainly care about that same story the same way you do. And you can talk to them about your story and they're going to want to read your story. A lot of young writers, a lot of new writers work with writers groups and writer workshops. And what happens in a lot of those communities is that you have the people in those groups are passionate about writing and about their writing. They aren't passionate about your story as, when you're sharing it. And that doesn't mean they can't give you valuable feedback about, you know, things about craft or whatever, but it does mean that 
they're, it's more of a quid pro quo. It's more about sort of writing on a, on a more technical level as opposed to sort of a visceral, passionate, excited. There's a reason why fandom often has flame wars where people who are like fans of Harry Hermione get into flame wars with you know fans of Harry Ginny and then get mad at each other in the real world um, because they care so much. And that passion translates into people who will read your story if you post it and share it with them and give you, give you really excited, encouraging feedback. They will encourage you to write more. They may give you sort of really interesting suggestions. Some of them may not be ones that you want, but they're gonna be engaged with it in a way that if you're an original writer who's just learning world building, it's hard. It's hard to get people, it's hard to build a world that people will really engage in. And it's hard to build characters that will stay with people even after they're done reading the story. And so it's that community, that that sort of really kind of active, engaged um, and prolific community around any one popular canon. Connecting to people through your artistic work, um, connecting with people who value your artistic work your creative work, your imagination, and whose creativity and imagination you value and respect, and who take it seriously, and who encourage you to spend your time on it, is incredibly powerful and incredibly important. It's, it's a support, it's the foundation on which you can learn to do better work and more work and more challenging work uh, as an artist. One of the sort of more prosaic, pragmatic, technical ways that fandom can make you a better writer is that fandom lets you build your craft as a writer one step at a time. To, to, to make an absurd example, you almost copy out like a scene from a book where you just didn't like one line and you just change one line. <laughs> uh, you know, you thought you didn't like the line of dialogue that, that a character said, so you change one line of dialogue you have just written dialogue, that one piece. You still have the rest of the story as sort of the scaffolding around your work. Similarly, you know, what, what obviously what people usually do, right, is they take the world and the characters and they write different events. They write different plot um, where the characters do something different that they didn't do in the original source, but there aren't new characters. Uh, and what you're doing in that scenario is you're learning to work on plot. You're learning to, to sort of write how one event kind of naturally follows the other. Let's say you're writing a Harry Potter story and you want one of your characters to cast a spell that never appears in the Harry Potter books and you make up a spell. Now you've done some world building. That's one piece of world building, inventing a spell that fits into the rest of the world that you're writing in. Let's say that you're writing a, uh, a story about the MCU and you want to introduce a new superhero or a new supervillain that doesn't exist. Now you're creating a character. Now you're building a character in the context of a universe that somebody else built. And that character has to, you have to learn how to make a character that fits in to the universe, that works with the other characters. You learn by doing that how to balance your characters so that one isn't sort of stupidly powerful and the others, as a result, become unbalanced. You learn how to share time between, you know, screen time as it were, between your characters in order to let them all develop and then ultimately at some point when you want to write your own original work where you want to do your own world building that's where you need to put all of that together i don't really believe in pure originality um every story that exists is in conversation with other stories and if you truly wrote something that was 100 percent original it would be incomprehensible if nothing else you have to share a language with your readers and an understanding of individual words. Every single story evolves from other stories. When you recombine things, you do get something new. 
uh, something that feels that it stands on its own, even if you don't know where the roots of that story came from. And so you can do all of that in fandom in, and in writing fanfic. So the final thing that uh, I really learned, I would say from, from fanfic is one specific piece of craft uh, to narrow it down to, to probably the single most important piece of craft, which is character voice. One of the most important things, the thing that you will get the most feedback from your community about when you're writing fanfic is if the characters sound like themselves. And that's a really complex thing to do, especially if, for instance, you're writing a story based on TV or a movie where you are literally taking the words on the screen and the movement on the screen and translating it into text that you are now describing the way a character speaks. Some characters talk in really long sentences. Some characters talk in really short sentences. Some characters build sentences out of many long, complex words. Some characters use very short words. Characters' accents come into their the rhythms of their speech. You know, you end up learning it and absorbing it while writing fanfic in a way that I think is really, really hard, in fact, to learn as uh, if you're not writing fanfic. You know, you can obviously try to find voices in your real life, but you know, you can't, <laughs> if you followed some person around all the time listening to them, um, you would, they, they would probably find that slightly creepy. You can watch your favorite episode of Star Trek 50 times. Uh, to nail down the rhythm of, you know, Spock's voice versus the rhythm of uh, Dr. McCoy's voice versus the rhythm of uh, Captain Kirk's voice. Learning the learning how to pick up on those different rhythms and learning how to to really build distinct character voices, then in turn translates into as an author learning to build your narrative voice, which is what gives your writing flavor. It's, it's like the seasoning uh, of a dish. You will notice that it doesn't sound right because you've heard those characters talking um, or you've read them in the books that you're writing it on. And because of that, you already know what that they should sound distinct. And in turn, that teaches you how to make ones of your own that sound distinct. I would love to know and hear from you guys what sorts of things fanfic has taught you um, as writers and if this resonated for you. My book, A Deadly Education, comes out on September 29th. It's a novel about a school of magic that wants to eat the students. <laughs> uh, and my heroine, um, Galadriel, who is not too fond of her name, uh, has to survive. You can pick it up from the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to Platform for more videos like this one from other authors as charming as me. <laughs>